Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Once again, we are back to talk about the Slaughter family. We did talk about the victims before. Go back and watch my previous video if you missed it. But today, we will be talking about the Slaughter family, their attributes, and their abilities. Let's just jump right into it. So starting off, before we get into the characters, let's talk about their attributes as you will see them on their cards. So savagery is basically how much damage output the family member will have. It says, this attribute directly affects the amount of damage you'll deal with melee hits, but should not be seen as simple strength. Think of savagery as a proficiency level for killing in-game used in conjunction with endurance as a way to determine the full potential for damage dealt. So endurance is going to be your stamina, savagery is going to be your damage output, you are going to have to kind of control your stamina, right? To work with your attacking because if you're drained stamina you can't attack so monitor your stamina to work with your savagery going into harvesting harvesting affects the amount of blood you gain for grandpa when interacting with victims it does not however affect the amount of blood gained from buckets around the map melee hits grapples with victims and executions are the specific interactions that can fill your blood vial dependent on your harvesting stat so again it does not affect the amount of blood gained from buckets around the map. So this means when you're hitting a survivor, depending on who you're playing on the family side, this will determine how much blood you get back to carry with you to take to Grandpa, to give it to Grandpa, who is who acts as a radar around the map, kind of an all-seeing eye on the victims that are around the area making noises. So if you guys think about it, as Grandpa gets stronger, the victims will have to really slow it down and not make much noise. Uh, as Grandpa gets stronger, everything becomes more dangerous around the whole map. The victims have to slow down and play at a very slow pace. Because if you're running around being crazy, Grandpa's going to hear it and you're going to die. Okay, you might not die, but you're going to be getting chased a lot. And then going down to Endurance, similar to the Victim's Attribute, Endurance affects the Stamina Drain and Recharge Rate on the Family side. However, Melee Strikes also drain Stamina. Keep this in mind, it's very important. Melee Strikes drain Stamina, making the Endurance Attribute important for dealing damage as well as mobility. So your Endurance and your Savagery again kind of work together. For example, if you're chasing a survivor, aka victim, and you catch up with them but your stamina is drained, you're not going to be able to attack them because effectively your character is too tired to attack. So you got to keep your, uh, your savagery stats in mind, but also your endurance, you got to kind of babysit it as you're running around. This is kind of a cool thing, you know, if a victim's done a good job at running away and kind of kiting a uh, relentless family member, they might have a chance, you know, if the family member is just tired and out of stamina, they could effectively get away. So this really makes you think about the approach and the engagement with a victim rather than just mindlessly chasing somebody around a map you have to consider how tired your character is and this is the same on the uh, victim side as well it makes everything feel a little bit more grounded and I and I like that touch so now that you know what the attributes are getting into the cards the cook his ability is the seek ability it allows the cook to lean in and listen carefully to any strange sounds he might hear around the map. If a sound is detected, he can focus in on it, revealing the location of the victim unfortunate enough to be making the most noise. So he's going to be, like, kind of like Grandpa, the all-seeing eye around the map, but in a more localized area to him. And so you don't want to be around you don't want to be moving around if you know the cook is nearby. Your goal is the victim is going to be be quiet as possible. Additionally on the cook, he can add additional locks to doors around the map. Starting the match off with three in his inventory, these locks can be removed and added back into his inventory should he choose to relocate one of them. The cook can also close crawl spaces, causing victims to need to reopen them again quietly. 
So getting into the cook's card, if you look on his card, his savagery is pretty high. So he's he's deadly. He's a deadly guy. He's also good at harvesting. So he'll be able to get a good amount of blood from victims if he hits you to take back to grandpa. His endurance, though, is very low. He's an older guy. He's kind of slow, you know. He's kind of getting to the point where his, you know, his, his hips aren't kicking in right anymore. He can't run as fast. He's a slow dude, so that's why you got to kind of count on his hearing to hear the survivors and possibly let some of the other family members do a lot of the work. But if the cook does get a hold of you, it's going to hurt with his high savagery. Next, we have Sissy. Now, before we get into Sissy's ability, you guys, uh, it's been talked about that she sings around the map when she's coming after you. Now, this immediately makes me think of Ruby Lane from Fear Street. I don't know what her singing sounds like. I don't know if it's similar to what Ruby Lane does, but the fact that you can kind of chase after somebody while singing is pretty cool. I can't wait to see how that is uh, uh, executed. So Sissy's ability, she has picked up some unique skills in her travels. She crafts poison from local plants, then blows the powder in the faces of victims or use the poison to contaminate items around the map. So it says additionally for Sissy that Sissy is light on her feet, similar to the hitchhiker, but also crafty, sneaky, and sinister. Because of this, not only can she traverse through gaps and crawl spaces, she can also utilize hiding spots to get the jump on victims. So this is actually pretty cool. Imagine hiding somewhere, right? Somebody's running around, just got done getting away from Leatherface, and then they're, you know, they're they're like taking a breath, you know, gathering their surroundings, and then Sissy just gets out of a hiding place right next to them. Would be an amazing scenario for this game. Or, you know, you could have it to where you contaminate an item in a room with poison, hide in a hiding spot in that same room or somewhere nearby. Uh, a victim takes the poison or interacts with it. And then Sissy just comes out of hiding nearby. Some really cool things. You could have a moment where uh, they're running away from like Leatherface or somebody else. And then you're around the corner. And then as soon as they turn the corner, boom, blow the, pa blow the poison in their face. So Sissy sounds like she could be a lot of fun to play. Looking over at her card... Sissy has low savagery, so she's not going to hurt you too much if she does catch you with her razor blade. Uh, she's good at harvesting blood, though, so you don't want her to... You don't want to... Even though she's not going to take too much damage from you, it sounds like she could hit you a lot. Not take too much health, but she's going to be getting a lot of blood from you for it. So remember that. Even though Sissy might not hurt you too much... She's taking your blood right back to Grandpa, which directly helps the rest of the team immensely. Her endurance is kind of on the medium side, so she can run around. She's a young girl, so she can. she's not getting tired anytime soon. Um, so that's Sissy. She sounds like she could be pretty fun to play. I'm pretty interested in getting in there and, and messing around with her. Moving on to the next family is the Hitchhiker. The Hitchhiker's main ability is to drop traps. The Hitchhiker is handy with a pile of bones and his trap ability is an extension of that. The macabre artist can place traps around the map that alert him when an unsuspecting victim steps in it. So I'm not sure how these work if they, because there, there seems to be two sets of different traps in the game. The ones that he carries and then the ones that are his direct ability. So I'm not sure exactly how the direct ability works if it's just an alarm or if it damages the victim player i'm just not sure but he does have traps and they will alert him and possibly others to where you're at as soon as you step in it additionally for the hitchhiker it says he's a slippery one and his traversal is a perfect example of that he can play as the persistent pursuer that is tough to shake off chasing victims through gaps and crawl spaces his high endurance mark means that he's swiping at you relentlessly while doing so. 
So think about that. The, the hitchhiker has high endurance. He's going to be able to attack you and not get tired. Very much mirroring how he was in the film. So you got to watch out for him. He's, he's going to be hard to break line of sight when, when it comes to trying to get away in a chase. So looking over at his card, he has around almost medium savagery. So he's causing a little bit of pain there. A harvesting, he's also kind of like Sissy, good at harvesting blood. So watch out for him. He's going to be giving Grandpa that blood again and, and causing everybody to be seen on the map if you're not careful. So if you guys think about it, the more you're attacked in this game, the more you interact with the family, the more the entire team is getting punished for it. So, so it's almost like the family itself, if they can get the blood back to Grandpa is getting stronger and stronger and more aware as they go the more interactions happen on in the match so they get so they get dangerous and more dangerous and more dangerous as the match goes on and victims are encountering them so his harvesting is about little above medium endurance of course is high for the hitchhiker he's going to be chasing you all over the place Next, we have Johnny, the Vilmer of the game somewhat. He directly reminds me of Matthew McConaughey's Vilmer from Texas Chainsaw New Generation. I'm sure he's kind of designed to be that way since we probably won't get Vilmer officially in the game. So there we go. We got Johnny to fill the spot. Johnny's ability is called a hunt. He's a stalker, a predator, and like any true predator, he's a skilled hunter. His hunt ability allows him to see and track the fresh footsteps of victims around the map. So, Johnny is going to be hard to break line of sight of. He Once he's on you, he's not going to let up as long as he can stay with you. Additionally on Johnny, it says, aside from being able to actually track you through the map, Johnny can also put his frame to work for him by being able to instantly barge doors as well as close crawl spaces in game. So he's kind of like a little bit of Leatherface and a little bit of the cook mixed in. And he's just a really strong dude. It says his hits are also concussive, delivering an extra layer of disorientation on attack to helpless victims so he's gonna knock the fuck out of you if you get into a fight with him uh johnny hunting you down is going to be hard to break line of sight he's gonna be an annoying family member to deal with if, if somebody picks johnny you don't want him you don't want him to get close to you if he's targeting you specifically prepare to be annoyed because he's going to be on your ass now he can't it seems like he you know, he's a bigger dude. He's not going to be able to fit in those gaps like the hitchhiker and sissy can. So you're going to be using those gaps to break line of sight from him. But in terms of being out in the open, you don't want to be out in the open when Johnny sees you. You want to try to get to some place where you can start getting through those gaps or, you know, anything to kind of put a wall between you and him because he's going to try to hunt you down and he's not going to give you up. So prepare yourself for that experience. Johnny's going to be on your ass a lot in this game. Looking over at Johnny's card, he has very high savagery, so he's going to be hurting you. You don't you don't want him. He, that's what I'm saying. He's going to be a tough one to deal with. Harvesting is low. He's not going to be getting much blood back to Grandpa. His endurance is kind of on the medium high side. So, yeah, Johnny's going to be he's going to be an annoyance. Watch out for him. And then last but not least, we have the man himself, Leatherface, a.k.a. Bubba. Check him out, you guys. Of course, his special ability is MAME. This one is pretty self-explanatory. Leatherface carries the saw. The saw is the MAME ability. The saw is family. He can utilize it in a variety of ways, not least of which is to dismember any victims he might get his hands on. Additionally, with Leatherface, he is the destructive type. Leatherface can destroy crawl spaces, barricades, and doors. Barricades being one of the few items that can give victims a bit of separation from the more nimble family members like Sissy and the Hitchhiker. This destructive option changes the routes present in the map each match. 
So again, Leatherface, kind of like Johnny, is going to be harder to get away from. I imagine that Johnny is a little bit faster than Leatherface. And then we look over to the card, actually, Leatherface has more endurance. little, Just a little bit more endurance than, than Johnny does. Now, I don't know if Leatherface runs as fast as Johnny, but he does have a little bit more, more endurance. His savagery, obviously, is super high. He's going to be giving the most damage. He's going to have the most damage output. If you encounter Leatherface, you're probably going to die if you get too close. So you're going to have to watch yourself around him. His harvesting is low. He's not going to be the one giving blood to Grandpa. He can, but it's not going to be much. So there you go. Very ob obviously the face of the franchise. He's going to be a brick wall. You just you just don't want to have a run in with Leatherface. Period. Most likely, it's going to equal death. So there you go, you guys. That covers the five family members. If you didn't see the victim ones, go back and watch that video, and then you will kind of see how the meta is starting to shape for this game. It sounds like it's going to be really fun. You can start imagining the scenarios that you're going to have in the game now as you play both family members and victims, and I really am excited about how this is coming together. I think it's going to, to just destroy DBD, honestly, in terms of how fun the interactions are going to be. Uh, just, you know, exploring the map, going around the map, stalking, stealthing, and chasing. I think this is going to be a really fun experience now that we can see how the victims and family are put together and yet we still don't know the full meta stay tuned they have a community hub up it's down in the description as, uh, as well as other links to the reddit all that good stuff again if you like the video give it a like it helps me out a lot you guys uh share it around do whatever i will see you in the next video this game it feels like it's getting closer and closer have a good one. Hope everybody had a happy Halloween. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.